spiritual father helped me to find the real reason why I'm here. And after a few months, uh, I think I went through a one year fasting. Wha uh, wait, hmm? what? Yes, one year. Mm -hmm. I've, since I gave my life to Christ, I've actually fasted more than I've eaten. I actually refused to sell substance for a man of God who gave me a place to stay. Mm. And I was kicked out. I was slept on the elevator. The guy in the building said, you need to go out. You can't sleep in the elevator. So I had to go on the street. Um, a man of God asked you to sell substance for him. And you refused and he kicked you out. Yeah, I literally told him face to face. I said, I'd rather die than do this. So being a Nigerian man of God, having to come and marry somebody in South Africa, a lot of people are like, hmm... Why are you marrying a South African? Are you here for the right reasons? How, how, how do you navigate around that? People need to understand how God works. If we are all Christians, we need to understand something. When God sends you to a country, if God is the one that sends you, everything he needs for you to succeed is in that country. Hello there, San Vidani Dumelang, and welcome to yet another episode of I've Been Through the Most podcast. That's right, you are here on YouTube because you love the content, so make sure that you subscribe and you join the family. Yes, we reached our target for 300k subscribers, but now it's officially rolled to 500k subscribers. We can do it with your love and your support. Thank you to our global audience. We always appreciate your comments in the section below. Make sure you tell us where you are watching from. Of course, mm -hmm. hello Dumelang to all our subscribers. African audience, maybe say hi in your own language, right? Yeah. yeah, from whichever country that you come from, just send a shout out there and then we will respond accordingly. Innocent mentioned YouTube, but if you're listening on our audio platform such as Spotify, hello and welcome. Remember to drop a like and of course share so that we can share this, we can spread the good news, yes. you know, amongst our audiences. So my name is Millicent and this is my twin sister. <laughs> innocent and if you think you are seeing double then i suggest you rush to kentucky town because it is back and kfc has given us a limited menu our favorite is the crunch double down of course and you know what that means millicent it means double the heat double mm. the spice and double the crunch rush to kentucky town to make sure that you get your limited edition meal Yummy, so we cannot wait to shoot, but let's get straight into it because the episodes are not just ordinary, but they will give you double the adrenaline. And of course, you know, we always leave people inspired, mm -hmm. motivated and encouraged because these are real life people, real stories. And uh, you feel real emotions when you're watching. And that's mm. what we're hoping you get to do. I hope I, I wish they could like double. Yeah, they will. Just like and comment. Yeah. That's it. Double the hearts and double the comments. Uh, Mr. Brain, thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you. The pleasure is mine. Thank you for having me today. Yeah. I mm. mean, are you seeing double? <laughs> yeah. Thank you guys for having me today. It's a pleasure being here. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we read your email and I got so excited because I felt like um, what you're going to speak about today is applicable to most of us. And um, it's a topic that is real and that is necessary. But first, can you introduce yourself to our audience? All right. No, my name is Bernie Toya. Um, I consider myself an enigma of sorts, I meaning I'm a mysterious person um, based on my trait and the things I love doing. I'm from Nigeria, I do state. Uh, and I've been here for quite a while, I'm married to Palesa, and we have one beautiful child. I'm a marriage and relationship coach, and also a founder of a ministry here in Johannesburg. Oh. Yeah, yeah so that's what I do. Mm. That's me. That's me for, for short. That's you. <laughs> okay. So you are in ministry. Yes. And also you are marriage and relationship coach. Yes. Interesting. So that means the people in your ministry get to benefit from free coaching Definitely. sessions. Ah! Definitely. Ah! Definitely. <laughs> okay, yeah. awesome. Now tell us about your story and why you're here today. Um, no, I, I came all the way from Nigeria while I was very young, while mm -hmm. I was quite young. Um, I got an opportunity to play soccer. Mm. I was already a Christian and already a leader back in Nigeria, serving and doing the work of God. And so I've always had this thing of the fact that I'm going to leave Nigeria one day and I'm going to be outside the country. I've always told my parents, told my siblings, told my friends. So after high school, I already got um, admission to varsity and a deal came from South Africa from one of the clubs, um, offering me an opportunity to come and play for them. Oh. And um, it was a few years later I discovered that God actually used that to bring me to South Africa. Mm. 
Mm. Because if he had told my father to sponsor me to come and be a minister <laughs> here, my dad wouldn't have done that. Because my dad was a massive soccer fan, so he paid for everything, sponsored, and I came. And six months after, the whole club went down. And I was sick in the face of God because I've always followed God from a young age. I gave my life to Christ when I was 15. Um, I was asking the Lord, what happened? Why am I here? And why mm -hmm. has things suddenly turned back? And he said, no, I actually brought you a true soccer, but that's not what I want you to do. You have to seek my face to find out what you need to do. So I kept on praying, helping my, help my spiritual father help me to find the real reason why I'm here. And after a few months, I, I think I went through a one-year fasting. Wha um, wait, mm? what? Yes, one year. Um, not one year straight, six to six. Mm. Yeah, but uh, I'm skinny today, not because I don't Wait, have food. Wait, who? I mean, that's still a fast. Six to six. Yes. For, for the yeah. entire year. Yeah. yeah. Is that, is that, is that, is that, that's, is that's not shocking. My life is, I have one of my sons here. He can tell you my life, my life is used to fasting. As I'm talking to you now, I'm in a one year fasting. Now, this whole year. And I'm, I'm thinking of extending it to two years because it's, it's, <sighs> it's my life. It's what I do. It's, I'm skinny like this, not because I don't eat, but because I've, I fast a lot. Mm -hmm. I've, since I gave my life to Christ, I've actually fasted more than I've eaten. Yeah. So the fasting <sighs> works for, for, for your ministry. Like you feel like that's what, that's what you need to be able to, you know. I, I don't think I'm fasting for my ministry to mm -hmm. grow or for people to come. I think I'm fasting for my relationship with God. I think mm. I'm fasting because I want to know him more, not because I want the church to grow or because I want people to come. No, mm. I think it's a personal thing. I was trained in a way um, where I was taught that fasting, it, it brings you closer to God. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why you should fast, not because you're expecting anything from God. That becomes a transactional gospel. Yeah, you are fasting because mm -hmm. you want something. But the fasting should be because you want to get closer to him. You want to build intimacy. And that's mm. why I'm fasting. And even when I'm not fasting, I don't eat till after 12. Um, my, my system has been wired in a way. Yes, mm. I was about to say, I'm yeah. sure you're used to it now. Yeah, yeah. It's part of me now. It's, not, it's nothing. Yo, <gasps> yeah, that, that is hectic. I mean, my husband fasted for 40 days. And then when he was done, he went into another 40 days. And that is the most extreme case I've ever heard <laughs> of. And I thought that's extreme until Wait, and today. And one of your kids wanted to fast for 100 days. Actually. Yes. <laughs> and he went, hey, okay, wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So after the 100 days fast, after the one year fasting, I got the, the go ahead to start the ministry. Um, I got the name of the church and so on and. But before that, I served in churches in Benoni. And one of the most damning seasons in my life is when I became homeless. Um, not because I was lacking character, but because I actually refused to sell substance for a man of God who gave me a place to stay. Mm. And I was kicked out middle of the night. I slept on the street. Um, I was slept on the elevator. The guy in the building said, you need to go out. You can't sleep in the elevator. So I had to go on the street. Um, a man of God asked you to sell substance for him and you refused and he kicked you out. Yeah, I literally told him face to face, I said, I'd rather die than do this uh, because I, I was well brought up, I was well taught. Mm. Um, even if it means I have to face death, I could not do anything that would... Because I came from Nigeria, my mother and my parents, they looked up to me and they mm. believed in me so much yes. because of how they saw me grow up in church. I was well trained, I was a young minister of God. So I didn't want to let them down. Yes. So I said, I'd rather die than do this. And thank mm. God I did not allow that today. Probably a man of God that you trusted. Yeah, definitely. Because he, that's he why you were in his house. Yeah, because you trusted him. Definitely. And, and funny enough, today his ministry is no more in that town. He's closed up. Oh, it's it's what God. God, God is faithful. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I left, slept on the street. And somehow, somehow, God helped me build, build up my life. Um, and f my life started changing when I met my wife. Um, mm. uh, she's a blessing. Oh, Palisa. Palisa is a blessing. It's <laughs> a blessing. When I met yeah. my wife, I was... In church? Um, no, I met my wife through the mom. Okay. So oh. what happened is that after a while, I managed to gather myself. I rented the place. So where I was staying, her mom was also renting in the same place with me. So she would always notice me praying and do my things and keep to myself. Um, not seeing, you know, this, this, this generation where we are in, if you're a young man staying at least six months, they must see a girl come and visit mm. you. But the mom was so surprised, she didn't see anything. So she kept on calling Palesa and kept him back and said, <laughs> Palesa, there's this pastor, this guy, I don't know what's, what's wrong with him, but this one is different, this one is this, this one is that. 
and Palesa told the mother because Palesa was an atheist when I met her. Oh, yes. She didn't, yeah, she didn't believe in anything. So uh, she, she she told the mom, okay, and that time when I, you 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 are a hundred <laughs> day faster. <laughs> <laughs> so so she told the mom, okay, I'm going to come to Bino. I'm going to prove to you guys that this pastor is fake because all pastors are fake. So she actually came on my birthday and she I was talking oh, to so her. she was your gift. Yeah. And <laughs> on my birthday, I had actually lost my place. I was no more staying close to the mom, but the mom invited me to the house. So I was talking to Palesa. They preached to her. For m- more than five hours, I was talking to Palesa. Palesa was so stubborn. Palesa was arguing. <laughs> Palesa was saying this, saying that. But after the whole talk, she gave her life to Christ there in the mother's house. Wow. And, on um, your birthday? Yes. And then that's how the story changed. Here and since are. then? Yeah. Since then, uh, she started following God, started serving God. And um, when I decided to get married to Palesa, when the Lord told me that it was Palesa, I was kind of angry. Mm. And I was kind of disappointed because I have prepared myself for years, you know. And my expectation was that when it's time for me to get married, I'm actually going to get married to someone that is like me. Mm. Someone who can who can fast like me, someone hey, who can, who can, who can pray, double your someone numbers. who can speak in tongues, and a demon will just ah. disappear, and so on and so forth. But now, it was Palesa, hmm. and Palesa is just a young believer coming up and has you were an seeing ugly a past. sister, yeah, a sister. I was seeing a sister, so I was not happy. But thank God for spiritual fathers. I spoke to my spiritual father in Nigeria. He asked for a number. He spoke to her and he says, "No, this one is the one. Don't mm. look at mm. the background where she's coming from." She's the one. Even the mom is rooting yeah. in the background. She's the one. Yeah. So, <laughs> so hence, hence, immediately I got the go ahead. I fixed the date three months. I said I'm getting married next three months. Ha! And that time when I fixed the place, I didn't have a place. I didn't have a house. I went to the father. I wrote Lobola later. You know how you guys do it yeah. here. Yes. I didn't have a cent. My Lobola f- money came two days before my Lobola date. It was by faith. And I wasn't expecting it from anywhere, but I just knew it would come. And two days before, someone sent me the exact money. Not a cent more, not, not a, a cent, cent less. less. Your faith can move a mountain. Your faith can produce Lobola money. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, that, that's how we got married. And uh, it wasn't easy. We, we went through a lot of things, stayed in the church premises. Um, but thank God for today. Thank God for our lives. Mm. And today I'm an author of several books and several books pending uh, because it's a gift. I wrote my first book while I was 16, so it's not it's sure. not a it's not a it's not a big deal. I can literally write a 70 page book in a day. You are such an extremist. <laughs> see why I said I'm an enigma of sort. I'm, I'm mysterious. Yeah. Yes, yeah. like I'm I'm still tr- I like you you so you fast for me. You're like miles. You're far away and I'm like, I'm catching up. I'm catching up with his life. I'm catching up. But I think that's extraordinary. I mm. think that's how God created you, you know, to 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 not be ordinary. Yeah. Uh, there's mm. an exceeding speed in your life, right? And that's just the grace of God. And I think it's such a beautiful thing. Yeah, it is. It is. I think I thank God for my life every day. Uh, it's, it's, it's a miracle. I think what God is doing through me, it's... It's still something that is still minute and still small, mm. but mm. it's something that the whole world is going to benefit from. That I'm sure of. Mm. Okay, mm. so then the pastor kicks you out and then what happens? No, the pastor kicks me out and I started staying on the street. Stayed on the street for one week. I don't know why. Some chased me because people testify. I prayed for them. They were healed. Oh. So they chased me. They didn't want people to testify calling the name of the junior pastor mm. so mm. It, it's mm. just mm. politics here and there so it got to a point i was really bitter i was really angry and i was saying lord i've served the people there was a time in a church where i was serving i didn't have much i sold i i, I wanted to buy something from the altar of the church i didn't have the money i sold my curtains i took my curtains from the door i sold my clothes to buy this mm. vase there's this thing they do in Benoni where you exchange clothes for um these um vases and ornaments things like that. yeah and, okay mm. i exchanged my clothes Matra, um, bed sheet and so on and so forth just to eh. decorate the altar and yet the pastor did me so terribly so I, I, I got angry I said Lord I am not going to do this anymore and the Lord mm-hmm. said the reason I've been sending you to these kinds of pastors is so that when you start your own church you do not treat people the way you have been mm-hmm. treated Eish. so yes, I said okay so what do you want me to do I I forged the head and I started I actually to a point where because I could not do something terrible to survive i could not put my hands into something that is dirty i've done all kinds of jobs 
but not illegal jobs. I have literally done everything. I've, as a pastor, I've literally baked and supplied to shops hmm. and get money and do things. And I've literally, I, I've, I've been a car guard. All right, I worked as a car guard in hmm. Carnival Mall for months hmm. under the rain, under the sun. I did all those things because I didn't want to. And for you to be able to set a standard that we impart generation, Come on. you need to start it from a good ground. Sure. You cannot change generation by beating here and there, doing fake and doing real, doing evil and doing... You need to start well. That mm -hmm. way, as you begin to build, what you are building has the capacity to change lives. Sure. Mm -hmm. And that's why I decided to say, I would rather suffer and make it later than to enjoy now and destroy my future and destroy my destiny. Hmm. So That's powerful. You always understood the nature of your assignment, and I think that's what didn't create fear. So most people, because they're uncertain of where they're going, they're afraid even when they have to start at the bottom. But because you are confident in what God has instilled in you, you are willing to start anyway because you know ultimately, you know, the God that you serve will, you know, will fulfill his plans for your life. So let's talk about ministry then. Um I mean, you started, here's Balesa, you know, who, who was feed an, the family. <laughs> <laughs> you must feed the family, you know, who was an unbeliever. How do you start, you know, church and the ministry? It's a huge assignment. It's a huge role. You're broken, you're hurt. You've got, you know, the past of meeting men of God who weren't really men of God. Mm. How do you navigate through that and um, establish something that is solid? Um, I think... The go-to word here, and think the watch word that everyone should watch out for is, are you sent? Has God asked you to do it? Mm. I think that's the greatest strength I have, is that I did not start the church just out of anger, just out of bitterness. I started when God said, now it's time. Mm. And that is my strength. You know, when Peter walked on water, Peter never walked on water, literally. Peter walked on the word, come. When Jesus Ooh. said, Come, come that was the word he worked on so if god says go sure. i think that is that is all we need and that is what gave me the confidence to actually start the church even if i was homeless i was literally squatting with a brother when i announced to a few people i was having a meeting with that we are starting a church and you know the thing when you are a senior pastor and you're squatting with a brother they look at you with this kind of uh, mm, <laughs> man of god mm. but I, I i i didn't i didn't let that affect me i went ahead and started the church it was not easy and when I started the church, one year into the church, I said, no, okay, it's time for me to get married. And I did it so fast. Because also I had challenges in the church where young ladies were coming just because <laughs> everyone was expectant. Mm. So I had to get married fast. <laughs> and, and maybe let's talk about that, right? And I'm so glad you mentioned yeah. that. Um, it's very hard for men of God, right, who aren't married to, to run churches. Uh, simply because, uh, one, I guess, because... It's harder because you're alone and you don't have anyone assisting you. But you also have the challenge of the single women who are coming and everyone looks at a position and says, I want to feel that. I want to be the oh, pastor's wife. Or you could wife. be looking at the single woman as yeah, well. Yeah, you could be tempted. I think for those pastors, I think, again, your well bringing, how you were trained. Mm. I think discipline. In my life, there are things I hold dear. Mm. Number one thing I hold there is discipline. Mm. The second thing I hold there is character. I don't, I don't care how much, you, how much you own, whatever mm. it is you own. If I sit down with you for five minutes and I hear you talk, then I can rate you not based on what you have, but based on mm. your characters Ooh. and based on your discipline. Mm. So again, how disciplined is that pastor? How disciplined is it? Because I didn't have the opportunity to do the things that most youth do. Mm. All my life, I've never drank. I've never smoked. I don't know what a tavern looks like except for pictures. <laughs> 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 so there are, there are certain things that I have I have restrained myself mm. from. And hence, I when I said the greatest blessing in my life is that I met God early while I was 15. Mm. Because then it has helped me to restrain myself. So those pastors, their greatest problem would be that they are not they were not well trained, they were not well prepared. Mm. Hence, they, they are in church and they are single ladies and single sisters and they begin and they to fall in the yeah, temptation. Yeah, because again, it's a personal discipline. It's not easy. It's not. Yeah, it's not easy it's, mm, yeah. by any means, but the discipline will help you. Okay. Mm. Now, I, I have a controversial question. Um, so being a Nigerian man of God, having to come and marry somebody in South Africa, a lot of people are like, hmm, 
why are you marrying a South African? Are you here for the right reasons? You know, are you here because you want to be a South the African citizen? <laughs> yeah, I understand. So there's that, there's that issue, and there's that, and another issue of y your, you know, the reputation of. I'm not going to say all, but some Nigerian people, the the drugs, like you mentioned, that one of the pastors actually wanted you to deal drugs, and then there's that as well. So have you dealt with that? And how, how, how do you navigate around that? Mm. Literally, I was in a podcast a few weeks ago, and when the, when the podcast came out, somebody commented and said, why don't you marry somebody else from Nigeria? The same question you were asking mm. now. Um, I think it depends on your destiny, right? Mm. Um, not every one of us are the same. Literally, when you see me walking on the street, you will not know I'm a Nigerian. Facially, except you hear me talk, I am a very different Nigerian. And the reason I got married here is because, like I said, I wanted to get married to a firebrand sister, somebody on fire. <laughs> and there were so many firebrand sisters I left mm. in Nigeria. So if God was to ask me to pick, to choose, I was going to choose one of them in Nigeria. Mm. But God said, no, get married. And secondly, people need to understand how God works. If we are all Christians, we need to understand something. When God sends you to a country, if God is the one that sends you, everything he needs for you to succeed is in that country. Hmm. So hence, I'm, I'm not in support of people who come here and if they say God is the one that sent them, that means God has put all your resources here. Hmm. So hence, if, if God sent you, then we, we should not argue about why are you not going back to married Nigerian hmm. sisters? Why hmm. it's just for papers? No. Even after my marriage with Palesa, I stayed long without papers because I had complicated season. So it's, it's not for papers. I'm, yeah. I'm still not a South African citizen now. <laughs> and and the yeah. stigma that Millicent uh, obviously mentioned, you know, how how do you deal with that? And especially now, also there'll be like most pastors or Nigerian pastors, they all going into ministry. You know, are there no other professions that they can go into uh, to contribute into you know building our economy? Why is it always pastoral? You know, I, I know for you it's a calling for sure, but how do you deal with that stigma? How do you deal with that narrative for people? Have you faced any of those challenges? Oh, definitely. Um, when you say you are in Nigeria here in South Africa, people look at you twice or thrice even. Mm. Um, but it doesn't bother me because I know for a fact that I'm different. That the idea of a typical Nigerian they know is totally different from who I am. So now, as uh, as a pastor who, who is say, okay, why can't you do other things? It, it, it depends. All right. If you are a pastor, are you just a pastor and doing nothing else? Because I don't believe in you are a pastor and you're not doing anything else. Like full-time pastor. You're, yeah. Mm. Full-time pastor. Of course, there's no part-time pastor. Ministry is, there's no part-time. Mm. Mm. Ministry for God is full-time. Yes. yes. But while you're doing that, you still have to be working. I, for one, do not believe in eating for members and eat, eating the offering. I don't okay. do it. Mm. I don't hold the offering. I, as I'm sitting here, I don't know how much the church has. It's not my mm. job. It's not my duty. There are people who mm. are do that. So mm. I have a different mindset regarding that. But for some other pastors, they go into ministry because they see ministry as, I was telling my son now, that many pastors go into ministry because they see ministry as a business. Yes. They see it as a way for them to literally make some cash. To survive. Uh, and to yeah. survive and to do this mm. and to do that. But for us, that is not what we went. If I had pursued my soccer career, probably by now, would probably be in Orlando Parade. I was that good. In my first season here playing in South Africa, I scored 30 goals in 20 matches wow. as a striker. I was that good. So if mm. I had pursued my career, I'd probably be in England right now, being a multi-millionaire in pounds right mm. now. Mm. So I, I was saying that I, I did not leave my profession who that had so much glamour and so much promising to mm. become a pastor, to become a fake pastor. Mm. Yeah. No, if I'm going to be here, I'm going to be real. I'm yeah. going to do it, whether you like it or not, I'm going to do it and please the Lord. Yeah. So I just mm. think, again, it, it depends on th those men of God. They need to find out why they became a pastor in the first place. Yeah, yes. and I, I think it's it's important to address that because obviously we're addressing based on comments, based on experience, based on the perception. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And sometimes, you know, you, you will suffer for, for a reputation that was of created. Of course. Not you by you. <laughs> and, and even if it's not by you, but I think this is this these are very real conversations. Um, and I'm glad you're addressing it, you know, which is great. I mean, we don't normally go that route, but I feel like <laughs> since you're open enough, Enough mm. and honest enough to address that doesn't mean that there's no Nigerian doctors, there's no Nigerian teachers or lawyers mm. or whatever. But we're saying specifically when it comes to ministry, that's sort of you know some of reputation or whatever. Okay, awesome. 
So let's get to you being a relationship and marriage coach. How did that come about? How did you leave your soccer dream and everything and said, you know what, why specifically marriage and relationship coaching? I think it, it, I think the idea came firstly because I grew up in a home that was not proper. And I, I saw my mom going through things I didn't want my wife to go through. And I mm. said, okay, if I'm not going to allow my wife to go through this, how about I make other people not go through it, not just my wife? And like I've also often said, your background should not put your back at the ground. Mm. So where you're coming from should not determine what you do. Come on so if now. you grew up in a home where you saw certain things happen, people in this world now, you, you literally don't have to be taught to do the right thing. Yo. Each and every one of us know the right thing to do. Mm. So I said, no, let me help people. I started my journey, I think, four years ago. But I, I really took it professional and really serious, I think, two years ago. That, no, let me really pursue this outside church. Mm -hmm. Because I'm this person that don't want to depend on church money. Mm. Because, okay, let me build my business outside church. Mm. So I can also take care of my family and do my own things and not bother about the church. Whether the church is paying the rent that's the church problem mm -hmm. if the church makes one million that's the church problem so i started pursuing it started from facebook and started creating a page and doing all sort of things um going for public speaking and so on and and so far it's, it's been great and I'm but sure it's I, great you say yeah. to talk about marriage yeah because it's a beautiful covenant that god has created to mm. see and i think if god chooses you and trusts you with with that that's a big deal and i also had to wait for a while after my marriage to try and test myself to try and see if I can be a practical example for others. Mm. I didn't want to jump into it because as a pastor, I've been giving advice for a long time, but I didn't mm. want to go into counseling full time knowing that I have a porous character. Yay. Because mm. whether we like it or not, when you get married, you discover certain things about yourself, mm. about your partner that you never thought was there. Yeah. So even if I was a good guy, a good single, I still didn't know if I had anger issues. Yeah, because yeah. you would only know if you have anger issues when you get married. Yeah, and your wife takes out everything. You. Yes. Eh? Yes. Marriage takes out it amplifies. everything. It amplifies yeah. both the good and the bad. So mm -hmm. I had to wait a bit. I saw that no. No, I mean, now I'm a, I'm a really good guy. How long have you been married? Uh, we, we became five years uh, wow. on the 25th of August. Nice. Sure. Yes. Amazing. Congratulations. So, I think Thank for you. me now, listening to what you've said, like in terms of character and how, you know, you had to literally be an example. Now, would you then relate to people going through like some serious issues in their marriage? Because it sounds like you are like... In good standing. Perfect. You know what I mean? You yeah. you have it so well under spoken. control mm. and you know you I mean you fast the whole year <laughs> and you know you the fasting again. <laughs> exactly. I mean probably Palisa was your first girlfriend and then she was your wife. Do you know what I mean? Are you able to relate to people who are going through the most out here in relationship and be able to advise them? without coming from a place of judgment? Do you mm. feel that, you know, you you Yes, you, you, you can relate, man, and, and really help people from that because cause some problems are this big, eh? Yeah, I yeah. get it. <laughs> no, I, I definitely can relate. That's why I went for training. That's why I, I was also trained because I needed to make sure that I'm not just coaching people based on my spiritual background mm. and how well taught and how well raised I was. Understanding that people came from a different background than me and their own case might be different. Yes. So I have to be taught to make sure that I sympathize with them, I relate with them, I feel what they feel. Mm. And as a pastor, I, I feel that. And as, as a human being, I think I'm, I'm like that. I feel people's pain. I could literally be driving on the street and I see people suffering and I see people begging on the street and tears just drop from my eyes. That's how I am mm. naturally. So I, I, I definitely relate with them. Yes. Despite not having the same background You've got as empathy. them. Empathy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's very, very important. Mm. It's okay. very, very important. So this book right here, the top one. Yes. I just wanted to get is there anything else you wanted to share from your story? Uh no. We can get into the books. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So what does this mean? That that title, the cover it's already intriguing what what inspired that okay that's that's a church book it's a book for christians it's not mm. my relationship book mm -hmm. um it's titled the monarchical structure of the african church mm. and that book explores the religious the beliefs and the background of a church that is run by a black man so that african mm. church means a church run by a black man because I'm part of this um, group of white people where they are about 80% white people, mm -hmm. white pastors. 
uh, because I frankly don't like my color. I don't know why. So, <laughs> <laughs> so now I, I learned something from being in that circle mm. that is quite different from us black pastors. Mm. How we like to explore people, how we like to um, eat from people, how we like to manipulate people, mm. how we like to be these kind of leaders that if you offend me, you must kneel down, you must crawl to me, you must lie down. It's a must that you must do this, do that. So uh, it, this book talks about the balance that is needed in the church, that yes. that is not how the church started. Mm. The church did not start by having that kind of a monarchical structure. The monarchical mm. structure is the king and the subject. That's just the, the pure definition. And you know, the relationship between the king and the subject is that the king can take your land mm. and you have no say. In, the, in the olden days, yes. the king could literally take your wives Mm -hmm. And you had no say. Yes. So that's the monarchical structure. I hear you. And so now, you can't bring that to the church. Yeah, now they have brought mm. it to the church. Mm. So in this book, I talked, talked about how we can it's strike the abuse. balance, how we can make sure that that is not how we should run the church going forward. If not, then the next generation would have no church to attend. Yay! Let's talk about the oh. next one because, wow, you are an author. So let's, Love just cover Dollars. One, let's just cover one that speaks on relationships yes. and what inspired that and what it tackles. Uh, we, we can talk on the love dollars mm. and, disagreements. and disagreements now that mm. book mm. Uh, speaks of um, balance because as you know finance is one of the major causes of divorce <coughs> um, because people are not financially mature to talk about marriage now marriage is is very important we need to understand that marriage is the bedrock of our lives it's part of our everything we do even those who say they grow up without parents they were, they, the father and the mother once came together and they had something to do with sex and then they were born. Mm. So we need to understand that marriage is very important. Now, there's a reason why in Genesis chapter 3, when man fell, God came and God cursed the man, right? Mm. God cursed the woman. God cursed the serpent. God even cursed the ground. But God left marriage intact. Mm. God never said that marriage is cursed from this day. No, mm. marriage is important. So this book, because I saw that finances cause a major problem in, yes. in, in marriages, people do not know how to talk about finance. You could literally see couples who I coach, they could literally tell you that he went to take a debt without telling me, without discussing with me. He bought this without discussing with me. So people do not know how to, people are not financially sound. And when you're not financially sound and you bring that illiteracy into marriage, it can cause a, a rack in your marriage, it can cause a problem in your marriage and definitely it will lead to divorce. So that's what this book about it brings the balance between your finances, love, and disagreement. Because these three things, they are in marriage. So how do you navigate them? That's what this book is about. And how can two walk together unless they agree? No. So mm -hmm. I think agreement is also very important because um, there always has to be, they can't have two visions in one house, yeah. you know. So you have to know where you're going and that needs to be very clear. Otherwise, someone or some people get lost mm -hmm. within, you know, the, the whole covenant of of marriage and marriage is also very spiritual yeah. you know in my opinion i don't i don't think that we are with someone because of luck i True. believe you are with them because god mm. created them for you mm -hmm. so which means that every part of you actually mm -hmm. depends on them and vice versa yeah. because you are created for one another so life should be better when you are married to a suitable helper or to the correct partner mm -hmm. things should be yeah. smoother not harder yeah you know and i think this is why my heart bleeds also maybe just also being in the ministry when i see uh people being married and and their lives have turned around for the worst yeah. you know they're mm -hmm. with the wrong person or they're not compatible they're not compatible or it's just pain after pain and loss after loss and abuse after abuse mm -hmm. and and so for me i'm like no we need to restore you know what what real marriage is according to to biblical principles beautiful mm -hmm. yeah i think the church needs to play a major role in that i think churches need to do more seminars need to create platforms for educating members we should not just preach to them the gospel the bible we should teach them about marriage mm. because many people do not really know what marriage is about like you said and mm -hmm. like you said if you get married to the right person it takes time but your life should improve yes my life has improved after my, after my marriage drastically I tell her by Lisa I, man. <laughs> <laughs> she knows she knows mm. wherever she is honey i love you so much thank oh. you for being there now your life should improve. So if your life is mm. not improving, again, maybe probably you got married to the wrong person. But mm. also, talking about com compatibility, we work that out. We are not compatible before marriage. We can be compatible even after marriage. Mm. It's a matter of working. And because marriage is work, 
sacrifice. But today you just hear this lady say, ah, if it's not working me, I'm gone. Mm -hmm. The guy say, if it's not working me, I'm gone. No, we need to work on it. We need work to on work characters. on it. Mm -hmm. Because the problem in marriage is the enemy, mm -hmm. not your partner. The problem, the P and the P. One is the enemy, one is not. The problem mm -hmm. is the enemy, not your partner. So eh. we need to make sure that we fight the problem and mm -hmm. not our partners. Hey, I Beautiful. love that. Um, lastly, for me, I think, um, you know, every time God has called you for something and you're in the, the ministry of marriage, I feel like that's where some of the attacks come mm. in, right? Because the enemy knows, you know, so much greatness comes to this. So he attacks that. Have you found that with you, you know, you've, you've some attacks were personal and you knew because, you know, I'm doing this. It's like, Maybe men of God who 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 are marriage counselors, and then you look at the men come like, when are you cancel people? But our marriage is not even working out. You know, mm. how do you cancel people out there? You are practicing what you don't preach. Did you find that you you've personally you are preaching what you don't practice? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I have personally had struggles, you know, and then you're like, oh God, but this is my assignment. I should be getting this right. Yeah, I think the the struggle I had in the beginning of my marriage was that I I didn't have patience. Right, I, I've, I've said it all the time that I learned patient from my wife, Palesa. I didn't have patient, and patient is one of the most important things in marriage. You literally have to be patient with everything, mm -hmm. with your spouse, with the characters. I think it, it got into three years into my marriage, I still could not, I still was not a patient person because I thought that because I was a person who normally moved by faith, I just like moving without thinking. And so when I got married, I was so fast, Get I was not patient down. enough, I was not. I felt like, no, we need to move. We need mm. to do this. And it got to a point I had to sit myself down. I said, no, this is not you. You have to adjust now. And mostly because you want to go into this counseling thing, you have to make sure that you can also teach the couples who you are counseling patients. And I had to learn patient. I literally had to ask God for help. And literally my wife, she, she she's, she's my coach. She's my pastor in the house. So literally she taught me patience by doing this. So sometimes if, <laughs> because I like leaving things, all over the place. I don't know if your husbands do that. I like living things yes. all over the place. So she, she, when she wants me to fix them, she will call me and she will stand there for like 30 seconds being silent. And I will say, honey, what's it? And she will say, you see that thing on the table? I say, yes. <laughs> and this is how she literally talk. You see that thing on the table? I say, yes. I say, I've removed it three times. I said, yes. I say, take it and put it where it's supposed to be. And she will just keep quiet. Mm. And she, she should have said, okay, honey, come and move this thing. But she takes her time. Mm. So that way I kept on learning about how to be patient, how to do mm -hmm. things following the procedure because Palesa is a perfectionist. She likes doing things slow but perfect. So I learned oh. patient from her. So I think that was my biggest problem. And yeah. thank God now it's, it's fixed. I'm a very, see, I say I waited today. I'm very patient. Now. Thank God. <laughs> thank God. And you did wait today. <laughs> thank you, yes. Lord. I think we're going to end it right sure. there. Um, you know, thank you so much for sharing your story no, um, and, you know, where you come from and where you are now. And thank you for using your gift and your career to help people. I think it's always the most rewarding thing when we don't just work for our gain, but what we do also helps other people. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. always my, my favorite yeah, thing. Yeah, sorry, where's your church? Can you uh, tell my us? My church is in Binoni, mm -hmm. Mount okay. Gilga Grace Ministry. Yeah, they're in Binoni. We've been there for five years now. Mm, we are so blessed to have you yeah, thank you We're so, so much blessed it's a to pleasure. Have you. continue with the great work yes. now let's so look forward to the comment section where are the married people where are the ones who are about to get married yes. and where are the ones who have gone through the most but have found strength in this episode we look forward to hearing from you and absolutely, if you relate also to the fasting story, I think that, mm. that film is also very fascinating that other people really need the fasting mm. to be able to function in their core, you know, in their space, you know, though we didn't get too much into it. But I think if you have an experience where you can relate, please let us know in the comment section. We will definitely interact with you there. We'll also leave details on how you can purchase the book and also contact him for his services. Thank you so much, Brain, for being part of this show. Oh, um is mine. Right? Oh, it was <laughs> awesome. We have come to the end of the show. Yes. For myself, Millicent. And for myself, Innocent. And of course, a Pastor Brain and our awesome team behind the scenes that make it all happen week in and week out. It's bye. Bye. <laughs>